All right, so I'm happy with the materials that I've created for the separate items on my object. And what I need to do now is prepare this mesh to be baked. I'm gonna bake from this high res mesh down to a low res mesh. I'm gonna make a normal map, also a color map that captures all the lighting and texture detail of this object. And I'm also gonna bake out a whole variety of masks that can be used uh, both to make adjustments to these textures that are gonna be created and also to author the types of shaders that you need for Dota 2 in the next video. So lots of very, very cool stuff. Now, when you bake from an object to uh, you know render outputs or you're using the camera, to bake, and we're baking between these items. Now, part of what's gonna be baked down is uh, are the reflections on this object. And reflections are based on you, the object itself, it, the shape of its surface, and the angle or um, you know where your camera is pointing, essentially. And if you'll notice, the reflections change as I move around. So you wanna find an angle here in the render previewer that produces reflections you're happy with because that's what's gonna be baked down onto the surface. So, all right, I'm happy with that. We've got a little highlight at the top of the blade. And you know what, maybe I wanna kind of pull that on around a little bit. There we go, that's good. Kind of falls off towards the front, very nice. All right, so now I got a nice direction on my camera to bake with, and we need to set up a few more things. Turn on your low poly object, in this case, the Topo 2 item, and let's assign a material to that. Press M and name it. Bake. This is going to be our bake material for this item. Now let's expand that new material. And first off, come down into the material down here and change your smoothing angle to 180 degrees. And you can see now we have an overly smooth mesh. If we don't do that, we'll get facets in our bake. So make sure you set that at an extremely high level. And you can kind of tinker with it as to, you know, tweaking and tuning, finding the level you want it to be at. All right, so click on the material group itself, add layer, group, and we can right click on that group and duplicate it. Click on it, left click, name that mask, because we're gonna have a mask group to author those masks I mentioned, and click on this and name it color, or actually, we'll call this shading, because it's not just color, is it? So click on the mask group again, add layer, material, and with the mask, what we're gonna do is, you see this base material down here, it is, uh, it has a diffuse amount of zero, which means it's not going to produce any, you know, color at all. That means 100% black. And this material we're gonna set at 100% diffuse amount with white diffuse color. And this way we can toggle off all the, um, all the other materials and capture a mask for each individual material that can be used to, um, author our shading for the Dota 2 characters or augment um, all the texturing work that we're doing right now, texturing and baking. So come down to the shading group and inside of this, let's add a layer, image map, new image, and we're gonna create a normal map. So let's name this sickle underscore normal, which is um, correct according to the naming conventions. Okay, yeah, I did create that file already, didn't I? I have not done this 10 times. Okay, so let's go ahead and click on Resolution, change that to 1024. And now we have a 1024 by 1024 image inside our shading group. And just make sure that mask group is off. Right click on top of the effect, come down to surface shading, change that to normal. You can see it's pretty wonky because we really don't have a normal map right now. It's adjusting the shading of our normals. So let's also come down while the image is selected and toggle on invert green. Normal maps in Modo and normal maps in the source engine have green inverted compared to one another. So by toggling on now, when we bake it, things will look right inside a moto because this is toggled, but it's also gonna be baked correctly for the source engine. So nobody will know the difference. It's a big, big help. All right then. We now need to come to the item list, turn on our high res object. I'm gonna come back to the shader tree just for good measure. Click on the list tab and select your UV map. At this point, just right click on your image map because it has the correct effect assigned to it and we can bake from object to texture. All right, so just to make sure, yes, we have our, lo our low poly object selected. So bake from object to texture, 
we get this option distance and there's a distance between our low poly and our high poly object you can see how they're overlapping each other and this is the maximum distance for what it's going to kind of detect the differences between them to transfer the geometric information to capture it it uses ray casting it casts a whole bunch of points at the high res surface to capture that detail and measures the distance between it this is the maximum distance. So say OK. And now Moto is going to load up all the geometry, all the textures, which we don't currently actually need. But it's going to bake all that information down into a normal map for us. And we'll be able to capture lots of high res details on our extremely low polygon, 500 polygon object. And now we have our beautiful, correct, normal map. I can close down the render window and turn off my high res sickle and look at that i mean there's barely any difference between the two this low polygon ob object beautifully captured all that detail as a normal map and you can see that here in the shader tree all right since we have our normal map set up properly and looks beautiful now we can go ahead and start doing our color textures now we have all these render outputs these will will automatically be added since I've added them in the shader tree. I showed you how to add render outputs and adjust them. So we have every output that we require for a proper linear compositing workflow. Now we're gonna render to outputs this time. So instead we use the bake from object to render outputs here instead of baking directly in the shader tree itself. So what I wanna do is turn on my high res object Come back to the shader tree again for good measure. List to make sure my topo 2 UV map is selected. And come up to bake. Bake from object to render outputs. And set the same distance as whatever worked for your normal map. Setting the distance can sometimes be a trial and error process. But you can also use like the orthographic views in the model quad layout to kind of figure out um, the distance, just look through the orthographic views and see what the maximum distance is between them. Measure it with a ruler tool, a lot of different options, but sometimes it's a trial and error process. But now we're going to bake out our final color texture and also all our beautiful layered outputs that are going to allow us to composite textures together in ways I've never seen in game workflows before. And here is our final baked, final color output. As you can see, it captured the reflections, the shadows, you know, all these texture details that we added and did a very beautiful job of it actually. But if we click on the output, we also have all these other outputs like my ambient occlusion. I also have an illumination total, a reflection pass, which can be layered up on top of um, the correctly layered render outputs, which we could kind of like paint in and out reflections. And that's where, you know, many of these advantages come from, because instead of just using the final color where everything is flattened down to one image, we can utilize a lot of control inside of Moto, because uh, Moto is so good at dealing with 32-bit images. So this final color output, let's go ahead and save that out and just save it as a targa. Name it final underscore color. And yeah, I've already saved that. But every other output, the alpha, the ambient occlusion, all those, save that image as an EXR file. Open EXR, float 32-bit. Name it accordingly. So in this case, I would name this probably Ambo. Um, you know, set that up in a proper file structure. And once you're done, you'll have all these different Open EXR images that can be loaded up in the next portion of the tutorial that we can use to further augment our textures in really cool ways. And I think you'll find that pretty cool too. All right, so I saved out my final color texture. Since I saved it out through the, um, you know, I, I baked to render outputs, it's not automatically added. I'll come to my item list, turn off my high res object, and just come down to the shader tree, add layer, image map, load an image, and navigate to where that new final color texture is located, and um, double click on it, load it up, and now we have a diffuse color image. It's being overridden by our matte cap, but I can turn that off, and now, look at that, we have a beautiful 1024 by 20 to 24 texture uh, that really captured those details in a great way, and serving as a reference, at least as far as what things look like when they're all flattened down. Absolutely beautiful, I think. All right, so since we baked out these textures, um, you also want to make sure everything is saved. And so when you have your image selected, you can come over to the clips and navigate down to that selected image and make sure all your images are saved out. Save the file. And now we're going to go through the process of editing 
this texture in its own file and also authoring the shaders for Dota 2. Um, so extremely cool stuff that, I mean, think about this. We've been in Moto the entire time and we've done so much already. Now there is one last thing that we almost overlooked and that is the creation of the masks. So we need to turn on our high-res object now, come back to the shader tree, and let's come back down to all these materials. And what I wanna do is I want to close down the big groups. I'm gonna shut off all these groups for chain, pull, handle. Within this group for metals, I have my metal masks. So I'll turn off the metal materials, turn on the metal masks, open that up. The only one that I have um, actually visible is the face metal. And if I open that up, you can see that I just have a simple material in here that's acting as a mask. And it's uh, diffuse mount is 100%, like I mentioned before, diffuse color is white. And this object is black. Now what I can do is come over to texture, open material editor, and I can make sure that it is actually creating the proper masks. Now I also, I don't need any of these other render outputs except for diffuse coefficient and the alpha. So turn every other render output off and through effect shading, I can view any of my render outputs. And so I'll check out the diffuse coefficient, see how it looks. And there we go, we have a perfect mask so that I'll be able to mask out the face from all the rest of my texture components in the next portion of the video. So I can do this with any of the other layers as well. So I'll turn off my face metal. You see that's black now and turn on the blade mask. Now that, that portion's white. So render out each and every single one of those masks separately. And I suggest you save them as EXRs. It's fine to save them as Targas because they are just gonna very simply mask out different elements. Um, but to do so, just go ahead and bake. Uh, we wanna have our low res object on, right? Select it, come over and make sure your UV map is selected and bake, bake from object to render outputs, same distance as before. And now we'll bake out that mask as an example, but you need to bake it out for every single separate material. Make our lives so much easier when you're editing the textures, even if you're gonna go into Photoshop and paint. All right, so my alpha output is showing up. I'll change my alpha to, or my output to diffuse coefficient. And there is my nice handy um, mask texture that I will be using. So save that out as an EXR or a Targa, recommend 32-bit, it'll just stay consistent. And um, now we can move on to the next scene where we edit our textures and we author our shaders, finally.